Okay, so if you're learning algebra, you absolutely must understand how to solve all sorts of equations. And when you're solving any equations or any uh, type of equations, there's basic uh, principles and concepts you need to follow. And I think a great way to reinforce these rules of algebra is to kind of look at solving a particular equation backwards, okay? And some of you might be saying, what are you talking about? That sounds crazy. Well, it is kind of crazy, and you can kind of see a little bit of what I'm talking about here. We're going to take a solution, like in this case, we have x is equal to 2, and we're going to just start building up a problem. And it's effectively like solving an equation or building an equation from the solution. Now, here we're going to build a problem. If I have a an equation I want to solve, I'm going to have the solution, but what we're going to do here is we're going to start from the solution and build a problem. Now, I don't know what your age is uh, for those of you that are watching this particular video, but for myself, I went to school in the 70s and 80s. We used to have these projectors, and it was like so fun. Um, uh, it was kind of like our movie days. The teacher would roll in a projector, and the projector had film reels. I know that's like so foreign because we have the internet today and everything else. I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about here because you just see this in old movies. But some of you probably went to school with these projectors. It was such a good time. And you would hook up these film reels, and then the um, film would be projected on a nice screen. Now, what was cool about these projectors is you could throw this thing in reverse, and then uh, you know the film would play backwards. And of course, everyone in class would laugh, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of reminds me of what we're going to be doing here. We're just going to be uh, almost like remaking a film of us solving an equation, and then we're going to kind of uh, go backwards to see those same concepts being applied. That's kind of kind of the way I'm thinking about it. But I think this is going to be helpful to reinforce some main properties and uh, rules of algebra when it comes to solving equations. So we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I am the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, not years, but decades. I love teaching math. And I can tell you right now, all students can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Who cares if you failed a few math courses? It doesn't have to be that way, okay? It's just because you failed um, a, a math course or two does not make you a bad math student, okay? What you need is the desire to learn math, you need encouragement, and most importantly, you need great math instruction that you can understand that is comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test, that you're uh, studying for, something like uh, the GED, SAT, uh, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, uh, the GRE, GMAT, something that has math on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. Uh, not only do I cover these categories, I have many, many courses. Matter of fact, I have over 100 plus math courses and uh, all these various topics. And uh, if you need a pair of math notes, I'm gonna leave links to my notes in the description of this video as well, but hopefully you're taking your own awesome math notes. Note taking is a, uh, well, I tell you, it's probably the number one skill to learn math. So many people minimize the importance of taking uh, great math notes, gotta become a great math no, uh, note taker. Okay, and if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's have a quick conversation about solving equations. And I think uh, when you see these uh, equations uh, in reverse or backwards, uh, it hopefully will help some of you understand these concepts. So let's just take a basic equation like this, and let's just go ahead and solve this in a normal way. So here is the problem, and we're trying to find the solution. Okay, so x equals some number, right? This is the answer, right? This is the solution. So what we want to do is, uh, you know, obviously take some steps to get to the solution. So here's the problem, and we want to get to the solution. So we're going to do this step by step by step. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, these steps uh, that we take are not going to change the problem, all right, i.e., that this equation here is equivalent to the solution, which is x equals whatever it's going to be. And let's go actually uh, go ahead and show you the steps, and then we'll kind of discuss this a little bit more, and then we'll kind of build an equation. So let's take this uh, first step. We have 3x minus 2 is equal to 10. Hopefully, uh, you're up to speed on some basic algebra. But if you're not, uh, we'll talk about some suggestions here how to learn this stuff. But the first thing we need to do 
is we need to add 2 to both sides of the equation, okay? So one of the key th principles, probably the overarching uh, principle in terms of solving any algebra equation is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. It's always about keeping your equation in balance, okay? So here, if I have 5 pounds here and 5 pounds here, if I add a 2 over here, what's going to happen? Well, this side of my little teeter-totter seesaw is going to go down, right? It's going to go like this. Well, to balance this out, I can either take that 2 off or I can add 2 over here, and I would be back in balance, okay? That is the same concept with solving equations, but we need to write this out this way. So our next step is what? Well, we're going to kind of add down in a column manner. And when we do that, we have 3x plus nothing is 3x, and then negative 2 plus 2 or, or minus 2 plus a positive 2, however you want to look at it, is 0. And then I have uh, 10 plus 2, which, of course, is 12. So we have 3x is equal to 12. Let's write that right here. 3x is equal to 12. Now to solve for x, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 3, and I get x is equal to 4. Okay, so this is my solution, okay, and here was the problem. Let me kind of just sneak this up just like that so we can just focus on this work. Sorry about this being a little bit down there at the bottom. Hopefully you don't have a problem seeing that, but here is the problem, okay? So here's the problem, and here is the solution, but really the solution is x is equal to 4. This, in fact, is, a, if you, you think about it, this is an equation in and of itself. Imagine uh, being lucky enough to have a test where the question is x is equal to 4, solve for x. You're, you might be saying to yourself, what are you talking about? It's my lucky day. The answer must be 4, okay? So 4 is equal to 4. Remember, a solution to an equation is that value that makes that equation true. So if I have x is equal to 4, what number will make this true? Well, 4 does, right? 4 is equal to 4 is a true statement. So anyways, just realize that your solution here is the value that makes this equation true. Okay, just because they look differently uh, doesn't mean that, uh, you know, they're not equivalent. So this equation is, in fact, a little mini version of this. So this equation here, 3x uh, uh, is equal to 12, is another version of this equation. So here is this equation. Here's this equation, a little bit, you know, uh, smaller. And here is the little microscopic version of that equation. That's kind of the way I like to think about it. All these equations are equivalent, okay? So the name of the game when it comes to solving algebraic equations is to take this big thing and keep doing all sorts of manipulations to it, uh, doing the rules to solve this until we get down to this nice little small thing right there, which is in fact the solution. So that's kind of like a big picture concept of uh, solving equations. Just keep in mind that these things are equivalent. We're just taking steps to kind of make those equations look smaller and simpler until we get down to our most simplest version, which we call the solution. So let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun here and let's build an equation. Let me get rid of this so we can focus uh, here. And I'm just going to make something up. Okay, this is just totally, you know, um, uh, we're just going to use our creativity. So here's the, kind of the rule. Here's the solution. X is equal to 2. So let's uh, kind of build this equation uh, backwards, right? We'll end up at some destination, but we're going to start with the answer. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe I want to add 3 to both sides of this uh, equation. So we're going to take our equation here, x is equal to 2, and let's add 3 to both sides, okay? Add 3 to both sides. So I have 3 plus x is equal to 2 plus 3 is what? Well, that would be 3 plus x. 3 plus x is one way to write it. So 3 plus x is equal to 5. Okay, so 3 plus uh, x is equal to 5. So we just added 3 to both sides of the equation. Now, I'm going to remove this here. All right, just see here we added 3 to both sides, and we came up with 3 plus x is equal to 5. So let's remove uh, that, and let's scoot this thing down here as part of our, our adventure to build an equation. Okay, what, uh, what can we do uh, to this thing uh, next that could be exciting? Well, let's multiply both sides of the equation by 2, okay? Now, this is really, really important. Remember, whatever I do to one side of the equation, 
I have to do the exact same thing to the other side, okay? This is key in algebra. And another thing is this, 3 plus x. If I want to multiply this uh, 3 plus x by 2, I have to put this whole thing in parentheses. This is a sum, okay? So our final answer could be what? 2 times 3 plus x is equal to 5 uh, plus 2 is what? That is 10, all right? That is 10. Now, if I want to take this a step further, I can use the distributor property here, right? And the distributor property is taking that 2 and multiplying it by 3 and this x. So that would give me 6 plus 2x is equal to 10, okay? So I'm just kind of going backwards. I've started with this 2, and I just started adding and multiplying and just kind of, you know, uh, applying another property here, the distributor property, to build a nice... Uh, problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and just stop and pause. Let's not take too many steps here because uh, I don't think I need to overdo it to uh, make my point. Uh, but let's go ahead and now solve this equation. As a matter of fact, let me scoot this over here and we'll take our lovely answer there. Okay, so let's solve this equation. Let's see if we get the right answer. Okay, so what do I have to do here? 6 plus 2x is equal to 10. Well, the first thing I'd have to do is subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. I'm going to add down a uh, positive 6 minus 6 is 0, and 2x plus nothing is 2x. So I get 2x is equal to 10 minus 6, or 10 plus negative 6 is 4. And now I have 2x is equal to 4. How do I solve for x? I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 2. Let me go and give myself some room here. So x is equal to 2. And check this out. That's the exact same thing right there, okay? That is the solution. So here's the thing, okay? Uh, you know, when you truly understand the concepts of something, you could stop and reason through. You're not going to, this is not practical. In other words, um, you're not going to just have, you know, a solution and just build prompts. You could, okay, if you're like a math teacher and you're trying to come up with prompts. But where this is valuable is when you are doing steps, when you're solving equations and you have all your steps here, written out and you're checking your work and you're looking at your work and you're like, okay, had this, you know, you know, when you're solving an equation, you're going from this step to this step to this step to this step to solve. But when you're analyzing your work, okay, and you're thinking about what you're doing, now you're kind of, your brain is going uh, here and you're like, did I do that right? You're going backwards this way. You're going forward and backwards, forward and backwards. It's going to make you an excellent auditor, okay? You need to audit your math work, you know, and that's so critical. That's why you have to be neat and structured so you can inspect and audit your work, okay? You have to grade your own work, and when you understand, especially when solving equations, how, to, how equations can be built, right? You know, you kind of go backwards, how you can create a problem by kind of just taking some steps. And as long as you're taking the appropriate steps, it's going to strengthen your understanding and you're going to reach what we call synthesis uh, in um, learning, okay, which is basically a, a total command of everything that's going on. And when you're dealing with equations, the stronger your understanding of equations and how they work and how to, you know, look at an equation, look at your work to make sure you did the proper steps, it's really, really going to help you out, especially if you are a math student right now and you're going to continue to learn math, which I hope you do. Okay, but if you need um, additional help with all the uh, steps to solve different sorts of algebra equations, whether linear equations, systems, or equations, all depends. Algebra is a huge thing. So you could be in pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, pre-calculus. You're going to be learning all different sorts of equations. So I have all those courses and much, much more at my math help program. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.